Over the first nine weeks, John primary care provider took the following sample. So the sample mean it approximately 92.44. Let x be a random variable from the global level. Assume x has a normal distribution, and we know the first from the first experience population standard deviation is 12.2. The mean glucose level for the fashion should be 90. Now, do this data indicate that John has an overall average glucose level higher than 85, use 0.05 as alpha level on significant level. So this is given and higher. So something signals are us here also, that means it's going to be one tail that means is going to be right tail test right tail test we are going to use our excel so we don't need any calculator excel is going to give us p value z statistics t critical value whatever you need actually excel is going to give you everything it is a one tail or two tail or whatever so well we have to be able to understand what kind of test we do first so well if population standard deviation is given, no matter what the sample size, we are going to use our Z statistics. In other words, one tail Z test. So that's why I said one mean Z test when sigma is known. And also there is also one more information. X is a normal distribution. But regardless of anything, even sample size is smaller, we use our Z test data and I have a data analysis if you don't have a data analysis please you know add the tool fact if you don't know how to add the tool fact check out the video and I'm going to click that and of course there are so many of them I'm going to look the z-test and t-test so we already know we're going to use the z-test why because this is population standard deviation is known so z-test for two sample notice that there is no one sample so two samples so what I have to do is I get it make one this one as a sample under x variable and i'm going to make up one dummy so let's go back and do that so under the x i'm going to type all those number 94 one one so this is my x variable now i'm going to create a dummy one here dummy one and i'm going to have a zero notice i'm trying to make sure that my x will understand that, that i am doing two variable z test whereas actually i'm not interested on that so i just put a zero here no so it's not going to make much difference here now i can go back to the excel and of course what i'm going to do click OK and once I click OK well let's do this here let me put this one here so I'm going to actually let's see this is highlighted yeah well if it's not highlighted make sure you know highlight it like that okay and of course this one good and of course 90 it's a 90 population is 90 again if it is nothing's there of course you're going to use this population mean the difference hypothesized mean difference in this case is a 90 and of course we're going to use the variable for one variance well why is the variance sigma is standard deviation so we have to find the variance actually so we're going to square it so if you square it it's going to give us actually 148.48 so i'm going to type it 148.84 so okay that's better i don't know why this happens okay so and of course if there is nothing you want most probably you'll see zero but zero is not going to take it so we're going to actually put down something very small 0 0.0001 that will not make difference in our calculation actually so what we are going to do is next alpha level so what is the alpha level that is the alpha level 0 0.05 again sometimes this is in default it, it is you can put anything in then we, we're done actually so what do you do where you want to see the answers or outcome I'm just going to put down to the right side here well of course that's my output and I'm going to yeah just put down here and 
enter. Uh, so I have z statistics must be rounded through decimal places. That's no question about it. And of course, these are all of them I can run three decimal places. This is the z test. And this is the p value for one tail. Remember, this is a right tail. So we're going to look for p value for one tail. And also critical value for one tail. Critical value for one tail. So we are interested on p value one tail, critical value in one tail also. We are not interested in those two. So this one is important for us, and this one is important for us in order to come up with our decision and conclusion. Actually, we need those two. Okay, now we are ready to find or construct the hypothesis test. Let's carry on. We do the null, we construct a null hypothesis. Let's actually have this here. Null hypothesis is going to be population, well, null hypothesis h sub 0 colon. Population mean is equal to 90. Population mean equal to 90. So we say the hypothesis, the claim is true. That's a null hypothesis. Or there is no difference in population mean. And alternative hypothesis, h sub a or h sub 1 colon, this one we cannot just make it up. We have to go back to the problem. So this is a higher, greater. So we know this is going to be higher. So let's take a look. So we're going to say population mean is greater than 90. So that's one tail and we know is greater than 90. That's the alternative hypothesis. Now test is come out to be Z36, 0 0.60. Here you go, 0 0.60, 0 0.60. That's the test statistics. In other words, Z test. P value, well, we have everything up here. P value for one tail, it's going to give us 0 0.20. Seven four. That's the fee value. Okay, so fee value. Once we have our fee value, we can actually compare with the alpha level and we can come up with a decision. Also, once we have our critical value, we can compare with the test statistics, we can come up with a decision. Now you have seen p value. Let's talk about a decision. So fee value, let's compare with the fee value. So what is p value here? This point is 0.274, and that's the fee value. And alpha level, 0.05, that's the alpha level, significant level. So our decision is going to be if p value is less than, if p value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we do not reject. Okay, since p value is greater than 0 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So, since p value greater than alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis. So that's how we come up with the fee value. We just compare it by definition. If fee value is less than or alpha, we reject. If fee value is greater than alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Let's go to the critical value approach. So we know the critical value we found already 1.645. Okay, so that would be 0, 1, 2, 
3 and same as negative 1 and so on and so on. Now what is the critical value? So critical value is 1.645 so 1 this is 0 1 1.645 so that should be approximately down there so that point is the critical value and I want to make sure that we understand this is the critical reason rejection area so also I want to go off a little bit to the side and reject null hypothesis R E Z E C T. if test fall to the rejection area reject the null hypothesis if test fall to the left side fail to reject the null hypothesis fail to reject reject what null hypothesis h sub zero so this is basically the important piece so how do we trust our null hypothesis we're going to keep or not so we so this point is basically our critical value 1.645 and we took the test so the test is down here 0 0.60 so it seems like test is falling to the well, let's use different link test is falling to the left side here down here actually so we're going to go with this one fail to reject the null hypothesis in other word do not reject the null hypothesis same thing so fail to reject the null hypothesis f a i l fail to reject the null hypothesis reject the null hypothesis same as saying do not reject the null hypothesis that's how we come up with the critical value approach so this is a free value approach this is the critical value approach now the conclusion okay so at con conclusion at five percent significant level significant level the data does not remember if it is falling outside we say does if it's falling on the left side or inside we say does not this is your housing you keep it actually so does not provide sufficient evidence type this basically that's simple as like that we just get this one yeah yeah that would be nice enough so I can have this is uh, maybe 20 yeah that would be nice that's how we write the conclusion actually so we have a five step hypothesis test null hypothesis we assume is true alternative greater than is not true in this case is greater than is exceeding test statistics we use this excel to find that phi value also excel gave us phi value once we have our alpha and phi value we can actually come up with our decision once we have our critical value and the test statistics we can come up with our decision also notice that all of them same decision fail to reject same as do not reject null hypothesis in other words, keep the null hypothesis, keep the null hypothesis. So, at 5% significant level, the data does not provide sufficient evidence to indicate that John has an overall average glucose level higher than 85. That is how we do 5 steps. Hypothesis test. Thank you.